right into the scripture and not sing our hymn. The scripture comes from James 2, 14 through 26. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. And if one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. Do you believe that there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You, you foolish person, do you not want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the spotty without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. Good morning, church. Well, I now remember I'm from the continent of Africa. Church is a celebration, right? right. Good morning, church! Good morning. Now we are in the church, you see? <laughs> That's what church is all about. I want to thank um, Pastor Archer and uh, the Africa University um, staff that have um, made it possible for me to be here to, to preach. Whenever we used to go to these um, meetings, I used to say to Elaine, why can't you send me to a bigger church? And uh, then she said, well, your time shall come. <laughs> and so a few months ago, she said, you are going to preach at a big church. And guess what? There are three services there. Oh, oh my gosh. I did not ask you for three services. I just asked for a big church. <laughs> so I said, well, I will do my best to preach three services because I know when you preach one service, you are like, God, I am done. Because your energy is just drawn. So I want to thank you all for being here. And um, I want to thank you for all the work that you've done for the kingdom of God. And I am here to say thank you on behalf of the Africa University. I'm here to say thank you. Not only that, but to say thank you for what you have done in the kingdom of God. What we are doing together in the kingdom of God, we ought to thank God for that. And um, I want to spend a little bit of time talking to you about the letter to uh, James. And I want to be very uh, mindful of my time because I had to ask Archer, I said, how many hours do you preach? <laughs> and my mind was like, you know, if I was home, Church is like an hour for five minutes. But I have been Americanized to know that church you preach for 10 minutes. <laughs> so I will do my best to stay within the 10 minutes. James says, faith without work is dead. 
Show me your faith and I will show you my works. James says it's not enough to simply go to church, but you have to be the church. And James repeats this over and over and over. See, you cannot call yourself a child of God and a believer in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit if you don't show it in your actions. How many of us have received gifts? I have received so many gifts, right? How many of us love to give? Oh, to give? Yes, right? We all love to give. So here is what I tell my friends. When you give me something, don't give me something that is cheap. <laughs> because when, when I give, I give something that has got a value. So that somebody knows that I love you. You can see my love in the gift. And when you receive a gift from me, you will never forget me. Because you're like, oh my God, this is, I got this from that preacher from Africa. By the way, I, I don't have gifts, right? <laughs> but when, whenever I give a gift, I want somebody to see the love story in that gift. Right? I used to, to write what I called love letter because in Africa we don't have all the computer that you guys have. So when I, I began to date my, with my wife now, we used to do very crazy things. Did you do those things too? <laughs> I used to write a letter, you know those handwritten letters? I would write it, reread it again to make sure the language is right, right? And I would spray my perfume on that letter, and I would close it very quickly to make sure by the time she receives it, that smell, good smell, is still there. And when she wrote to me, she also did very crazy, crazy things. She would write her letter, and then she would take that letter and kiss it with her mouth. You know what happened when the guy on the other end received the letter, right? I would open the letter. The first thing I did, even before I read what it was in the letter, I would kiss that letter because there is love in there. James says faith without works is dead. Your faith must show itself in how you act into the world. Why? Because faith is not a religious thing, but faith is a spiritual thing. It is a gift of the Holy Spirit. When you are able to give, it is a gift of the Holy Spirit. And so James says, I want to go to a church, but not every kind of a church. James says, I want to go to a James generation church. What kind of a church is that? It is a church that is exciting, right? It's a church that is energizing. Did you like the choir? I like the choir master. I mean, he is like into it. He begins to dance. I love those drums. James says, I want to go to a church that is electrifying, a church that is energizing. I don't like to go to a check that is boring. <laughs> Do you like a check like that? James says, I like to go to a church that has got faith that is energizing. I want to go to a church where there are faith, where there is faith that speaks. Did you know that faith speaks? Faith speaks. I want to go to a church where faith can sing, and when faith sings, I can dance. Don't be afraid to dance in the choir because that's why you are there. 
James says, I want to go to a church that expresses itself in actions. How is your faith? How, how, is, how does your faith express itself? How many times or how long have you been coming to church? Some of us, we have been coming to church for 20, 30 years, but we have never taken another step. James says, your faith must lead you into something, into giving a voice into somebody. We talked about Anna. Thank you for supporting Anna. But there are so many Annas in the world. What faith does is to open our eyes to see where is the need. And then when we see that need, we act by giving a gift. We are there. Wherever there is a need, Methodist people are there. Don't you love to be a United Methodist? That's why, that's why we, we are such an exciting church. When people say the Methodist church is so boring, tell them that's not true. We are an exciting church. Why? Because we are a Holy Spirit-filled church. We are not a religious church. There are so many young people in Africa whose lives are decked on the rock. There are so many kids in Africa whose parents have died of HIV and AIDS, and they are taking care of other children. They become a mother sometimes at the age of nine. They begin to take care of other children. And they don't have any hope to go to any school because who is going to pay for them? And so their lives are stuck. But thank God for bringing Africa University on the continent. There are kids who get there, and then when they get there, they find somebody who is able to introduce them to somebody. Isn't what the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about? Introduce me to somebody. They find some people with faith, and with that faith, they are able to regain a voice in life. Two people welcomed these missionaries, and they opened their doors in a village in Africa. They welcomed these missionaries, and they stayed with them. And the local people, they thought, why would you welcome missionaries in this village? You are doing something bad. And the husband, the father of that family, he was murdered. Missionaries. And his wife was left with four boys and four girls all by herself. People thought she would maybe stop to go to church and to welcome missionaries. Guess what she did? She continued to welcome missionaries in the village. After losing her husband, she continued. And her kids, they continued to raise these questions. Why are we still going to a church? That killed our dad. And the woman will say, well, don't worry, your dad died because of his faith. James says, show me your faith. I will show you my what? Actions. With the time, those kids began to question, where is my dad? Where is our dad? Who is going to take care of us? And one of those kids ended up at Africa University. And when that kid was there, he began to ask these questions. 
where is my dad? This young man would write all kinds of letters and put them in the Bible. God, where is my dad? Who is going to take care of me now? This young man had a dream. And God spoke in a very clear way. I am more than a father to you. I am more than a dad to you. I am going to take care of your life. So this young man, he woke up and wrote that. Following morning, he wakes up, puts on his clothes, goes to the class. And from nowhere, there were these missionaries who showed up. And they began to talk to this young man. Two weeks later, they flew back to the USA. And then, after they flew back, somebody called this young man into the business office and said, we have got a check for you to pay for your four years of school at Africa University. Where did that come from? Well, somebody who was here sent this check to pay for your four years of education at Africa University. Isn't God amazing? That young man is no longer a young man, but he is a medium-aged man. He is preaching to you this morning. If it was not of a child of God who met this young man, I would not be here. I would not be able to finish a Bachelor of Divinity, a Master of Divinity, and a PhD. But because of a James Generation Church, I am able to preach to you, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. If it was not of that missionary, I would not be here. And James says, I want to go to a church where there is so much energy, where somebody can give me new lives. If it was not of the United Methodist Church, I would be dead by now. Because there, there are those whom I went to school with, when I go home now to visit, I ask my brothers, where is so-and-so? They tell me, oh, he died of AIDS. Where is so-and-so? Oh, he's buried over there. My friends have all gone. But because of the grace of God, because of the faith of somebody, I am who I am. I am able to give, right? The Bible says, to whom much is given, you are a good Methodist. <laughs> to whom much is given, much is expected. I am here to give back. I am in this country to give back. I am here to teach. Right now, when I'm teaching the New Testament, there are 65 students sitting in the classroom. And guess what I do? I am like Elf. Do you know Elf? I am so energized. I'm saying, God, these are 65 congregations who are being taught by somebody who could have died in Africa. But thank God for Africa University. Thank God for Methodist people like you. James says, by the way, there's somebody whose name is Abraham. Because of his faith, he was able to leave his country. Because of his faith, he was called a friend of God. Don't you want to be called a friend of God? 
because of faith. James says, one day I want to be a friend of God. One day I want to be like Jesus. He says, no, no, no. There's also another woman by the name of Rahab. I mean, the Bible is very weird. Don't you think so? And James says, there was a, a woman by the name of Rahab. She was a what? A prostitute, James. Why are you saying that? Didn't you have your mama who told you that's a bad word? But James wanted to make a point. When faith enters into anybody, it makes you a different person. Amen. When you have got faith, you are no longer who you used to be, but you become a new creature. Amen. Rehab was able to do the right thing. Faith makes us hospitable. We, we are able to, to welcome a stranger. We are able to love a stranger whom we don't know. That's what faith does. How is your faith? Do you all have a credit card? Hello? I have one. When I came to the United States, my friends at the seminary, they saw how I was uh, uh, struggling. Said Israel, have you ever heard about something called a credit card? I said, what in the world is that? Well, it's a credit card. You, they put some money in there, and you can use that money, and you can pay it bit by bit. I said, where would I get that bit by bit? <laughs> he said, oh, just get one. Hmm. I thought about it. I said, well, let me try it. I did apply for a credit card. It showed up in the mail. And then when it showed up, I went to the shop, right? And I had all my stuff and come to the checkout counter. I swiped the card. It didn't work. I was so mad. Have you ever been embarrassed when your card doesn't work? Thank God these days they say insufficient funds, right? So this young lady was looking at me like, did you put money into this card? I said, this is a brand new card. I said, well, let me go home and leave my stuff. I left the stuff. I never came back. Then I went to ask my friends again, said, you guys, you said I should apply for a credit card. It's not working. I said, Israel, did you call the 1-800 number? <laughs> I said, what in the world is that? I said, let's see your card. I said, here it is. You see there's a 1-800 there's a number here. It says, activate your card by calling this number. Did you activate it? I said, you never told me that. <laughs> so I, I peeled off that. And then I called that number. And guess what it says? Now you can use your what? Your card. Why am I saying this? Faith is like a credit card. If you don't activate it, it will never work. Right? But you, you have to activate your faith in order for God to begin to work in your life. That's what faith is all about. Faith, and then when you do that, you become adventurous, right? You become an excited person. By the way, if you have got a credit card, it will be good for you to fly to Zimbabwe to be on the campus of the Africa University so that you can see yourself and hear the stories yourself. That's what faith is all about. May God bless you. May God activate your faith.
to give some more to young women like Anna, to give some more to another girl child. If we at the time, we could have talked about the suffering of the girl child in the continent of Africa. But Anna is not the only one. There are so many Annas who are waiting for our faith.